Okay, I'm doing a, doing a demo on how to attach props. <laughs> I'm gonna make an ugly prop. Um, so in this scene, we've got a character who is smiles, and then I've also got this prop. I'm going to make sure that I have a proper peg on that prop. So there's a couple different ways you can attach a prop to a character. I'm going to show you guys my favorite way and the way that usually studios in Vancouver want you to do it. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it though. So we'll show you this one way and then I'll do a really quick summary of all the other different ways you can do it. So in this scene, actually I should probably make this a different color. In this scene, I want uh, this square to be in Smile's hand. The beauty of harmony is that we work in a hierarchy with pegs. So all of the artwork exists on these blue nodes. All of the pegs exist on these green nodes. If you want something to follow a character's hand around, you need to attach the prop to the peg of the hand. And your first inclination to do that would be to take the prop, find the hand in the node view, and then attach it in the same place. Ooh. One sec. As you can see, I'm already running into trouble here because there's no easy way to attach this prop to be visible. I needed to add a composite so it could run into the base composite and actually show up in my scene. Oh my god, where did it go? Because this is a free rig, it's also built very strangely and I have no idea why it's not showing up. So the some people will first put a prop into a build, but the reason I think that's a bad idea is you start trying to mess with a bunch of different layers. So in this node view, the hand piece right here is in its own group, which is in a body group, which is somewhere around here, right here. And then it's in this group, and then it's outside. So for someone to find your prop, it's like buried several layers deep into the rig and you're running through all of these different connections that run through other groups and it's just a technical nightmare trying to get that prop to show up in this really technical build. So my favorite way of doing it, if we go back to the hand, this was my prop drawing. Because this hand is running through a bunch of cutters in a different part of the build and I don't feel like investigating all of that, I'm going to remove it out from inside where the hand exists, go back to my top view, and place it out here. So now I can see it again. It's very easy. I have my prop and my character. It's so easy. It's not inside of stuff. But how do you get it to follow the hand? The easiest way to do that is to, if I go into this rig, you can see as I go through layers, there's a multi-port in and a multi-port out. And what that means is as we go through a group, this peg, this line, runs into this group and it comes in through here. That's what the multi-port in is talking about. Anything that is above that peg inside of a group runs through a multi-port in. This multi-port out runs out downwards. That's where this is, it comes here. It's basically these two squares. This is the multi-port in, this is the multi-port out. The reason they're called multi-port ins and multi-port outs is, as you can see here, you can have multiple ports outwards. All of these blue ones signify that they're either running from a composite, a drawing, or another group. The green lines mean that it's coming from a peg. The cool thing about harmony is you can also take a peg and run it out of something. So I'm going to go find my hand, which is several layers deep, and I'm gonna find the hand peg. 
because that's what I want the prop to follow. I want it to be attached to this peg without having to put it into the build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an extra line coming from the base of the hand peg and I'm going to plug it in to the multi-port out. When we go one layer up, you can now see in that arm there's now a green square coming out. I'm going to grab that green square and drag it all the way down here to the next multi-port out. We go one more group up. There it is again. And now at the very top, we have this extra little multi-port out that connects all the way to the hand peg. If I hover over it, ideally, it says where it belongs. The body port, because Smiles is split into a group within a group within a group, it just says body port. But in other builds, they aren't usually split into like 10 groups inside of groups inside of groups. It's usually a group and then immediately, there's the hand. Um, now I have a peg that I can attach the prop to. So I can just plug it in there, replace the prop where I want it to be, scale it to be like roughly hand size. And now when I grab the hand peg, it is stuck to his hand. It is stuck to his hand. It continues to be stuck to his hand no matter what. Now, if you want it to seem like he is actually holding it, a lot of times uh, hands are built with overlays and underlays. You can see here that I've got two different pieces to the hand. When I go find them in the node view, we have it split up into different layers. We've got hand CA, hand LA, and hand OA. And those are referring to the different art layers. So we've got the OA is the overlay art, LA is line art, CA is color art. If we select one of these, we go into the drawing node. As we hop through, we can see that they all have their own sections. But it's all the same drawing, split into its layers into different nodes. They're technically all the same piece of paper. So if you change one, it affects all the others. But since they're split into their different art layers, I can affect the Z depth of the different layers. So for, if we go back to camera, I'm going to bring the prop forwards. So I have the prop selected on its peg. I'm going to hit alt down arrow and it comes forwards. I'm now going to select the hand LA, which is just the thumb piece and I'm going to hit alt forwards and it's now overlaid over top. You would then want to redraw the thumb to make it look like he's properly holding it. I'm not going to spend the time to do that, but he is now holding this prop and you can animate him around as needed. And that's why a lot of builds are set up this way to begin with. If your build is not set up this way to begin with, um, the easiest way I've found to do it is just make a new drawing. It doesn't have to be uh, the same drawing split into the different art layers. When I worked on Rick and Morty, there would be a separate drawing for the hand and a separate drawing for the overlay art. And they were not linked other than they both ran into the same peg at the top. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, this sort of concept continues to apply for every part of the body. If you needed the character to wear a hat, you would find the main peg that you want that prop to follow. So for this, I would just pick the main head peg because usually when I'm rotating the head around, I'm grabbing this peg. Find that in the node view. It's this master peg for the head and we run through the whole process of plugging it into the multi-port out, and so on and so forth. And so on and so forth. And now we have an extra peg. So if I had another prop, uh, control C, in columns, we have another square. I'm going to now connect it to his head. 
and place it where I want it to be. And now when I go up, as I move his head around, the prop animates around with it. If you wanted something to be held in the elbow of somebody, you would find the elbow peg and you would do a sort of similar thing. Um, if you needed a prop to be both above and below something, you would have to do similar to what you do on the hand. So let's say he needs to hold a ring on his arm. Ring, like a big pool noodle ring, I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna make a big circle, no, a circle. We've got a big circle, and we need it to be both above and below his forearm. There's a couple different ways we can do this. With the prop built, you can, how do we do this? You can do what I suggested before, where you make a brand new drawing, a completely empty node, I'm just going to call it ring ol, add and close. It's going to give them a composite so they're all easy to work with together. Give this its own peg and then connect them onto the same peg so when I move it, it moves together. On the ring ol part, what I'm going to do is go into my drawing view, turn on my light table. I'm going to copy the artwork from the ring select the ring OL, paste it in place, and then with my eraser, I'm going to cut through it and remove the piece I don't need. Then with the ring OL, I can bring it forwards in Z depth and send the back one backwards, and they both move on this one peg. The downside of this is you have to manage that edge, but it's handleable. Um, the other way to do it, let me just get rid of this for a second. Oh, do I have display all on? One sec. Display. There we go. I don't want to see that anymore. If we want to make them all the same drawing, uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Control C, Control V makes a perfect clone. We also want the peg to be a perfect clone. So instead of just copying the drawing node, I'm going to copy both of these Control C, Control V, perfect clones. So now when I grab this one, it affects the other one as well, even though there's actually two of them there. And then the simplest way to do this is to then isolate the different art layers. So I've got this one will be an overlay layer, and then the other one I want to just be the line art. And it's not showing up now because that artwork wasn't just on the line art layer. What layer was I drawing on? I drew on the color art. So put it back on the line art. It shows up now. And then for this one, we go back into the drawing layer. I'm going to control C, control V it back into spot. Now we have this overlay layer. And on here, I'm gonna make sure I'm on the overlay drawing because now that these are identical drawings, if I'm not on the correct art layer, I will be affecting the wrong thing and I want to just erase the overlay part. So we'll do the same sort of thing. I'm on the other downside of this is in your tool properties. If you have this selected, it affects all art layers from overlay all the way down to the underlay. So when I erase on the overlay layer, it erases everything underneath. So you wanna turn that off. Make sure you're on the overlay layer, cut through it. And now you can see more clearly with the light table turned on 
that I have an overlay layer and underlay layer, and then it would be the same sort of process. This shouldn't have been a clone, because if I bring this forward, I'm going to bring this forward as well. I need this to be a duplicate, not a clone. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. If you control C this peg, instead of hitting control V, you're going to hit control B, and you have all of these options. Uh, a clone means when you affect the original, the clone is adjusted, and vice versa. They are intrinsically linked. If you want it to be a duplicate, where it looks identical, but if you affect one, it doesn't affect the other, you want to make sure that on this nodes option, you click create new columns, which means that Harmony runs on basically an Excel sheet. <laughs> so a new column means we've made a new element, a new asset in the folder. So we're copying all the artwork, we're copying all the peg information, whatever we're copying is going to be identical, but it is now considered a brand new element in the theme. So if I affect the original, the new element will not be affected. And that's what people mean when they say a duplicate versus a clone. You hit OK, plug it back in. So this had the same peg information as this one, but now when I move this one, it doesn't affect the other one. So I can bring it forwards. And now we have a ring on his arm. And then you would go find the elbow peg, and you would connect it to all the multi-port outs. Does that all make sense? So what's the difference between these methods? Um, so, right, I said I was going to go through all the different methods. I couldn't go through all the different methods easily with this guy because I forgot how insanely technical his build is. So usually um, when I have a greener artist on my team, what they'll do is they will fully just grab the artwork itself for this ring, and then they'll copy the artwork, not the peg information, not the drawing nodes, They'll go to the hand, make a new drawing for the hand. So I hit a hotkey that's Alt-Shift-D. It creates a brand new drawing. And then they will paste the artwork into the hand drawing itself and then make it work that way. And the issue with that is that oftentimes when you're working in a harmony show, um, When you're working in a harmony show, um, why is that not pasting? Is that, yeah, okay, there we go. Back, back. When you're working in a harmony show, when you have a prop, the compositing team does all of their compositing in harmony as well, which means that they want to give that prop its own treatment. And when it's fused to the actual artwork of the hand, they can't do that. And it's a huge pain in the ass to adjust the animation on a prop or make the prop switch hands if the prop only exists in the artwork of the hand. Because then it doesn't have its own peg. It's the hand and the prop are all one fused element and it's much harder to do revisions on, it's much harder to composite. Some shows want you to do that because they're very simple shows. I haven't worked on a show that's wanted me to do that, have the prop physically in the artwork for probably five years. Um, the other thing people will do is they'll take that prop node and then they'll do what I tried to do earlier and just paste it deep inside of the character rig. So it still keeps its peg and you can still edit it by itself, but depending on the rig, it might be really technical where every arm on this guy runs through a very complex series of cutters so trying to get the prop to properly show up is really difficult because there's all these different visibilities and cutters and it's this is like a way overbuilt build for that kind of stuff. So those are the two ways that people will put props in that kind of tells me that they're a little bit junior is they try and put it inside the build and when it's inside the build it's harder for people to find, it's harder to pe for people to edit, it's harder for people to composite on. When it's outside of the build, when someone opens the scene, they see it right there. And then they can add its own color treatment, 
it's easier to get to, it's easier to manipulate, you can switch hands easier, things like that. Does that make sense? Oh, for the overlay stuff? Yeah, for the overlay stuff. Okay, so the two methods here. This one is its own drawing entirely. So when I select this drawing, you can see that all I have in here is just overlay artwork. There is nothing else in there. When I go into the drawing node, hello, where did I put it? On the color art. When I go into the drawing node, there is only artwork on one art layer. On this one, these two drawings are clones. Mm -hmm. So if I edit the art on this lower one, it's editing the art on the upper one. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that I've separated this single drawing into two pieces, and I've isolated the two different art layers. So this piece is isolated just to be the overlay, and this piece is isolated just to be the line art. So if I wanted to, let's say, we got a revision that the ring needs to have, needs to not be a perfect ring. I can go into my camera view. Let me just cancel this. Get out of here. What the hell? What is going on here? Oh, right, I put the artwork in the. There we go. That was in the hand drawing. Okay, let's say we got a revision on this ring that we needed to be a slightly different shape. Because these are duplicate drawings, I can now go to my tool properties with my white cursor selected, hit apply to all layers, grab any of the points that I want to adjust, and it affects it all together roughly. Whereas, if I had, oh, I should have deleted that other piece. There we go. Whereas, if I needed to then adjust the prop, if this didn't exist right here, I would have to adjust the artwork on this one piece and then go into the other drawing and try and match it, or copy and paste the artwork over and do a lot of work. So this one way works quickly, but these drawings are not identical. So if I affect this one, it does not affect this one. Whereas these drawings are identical. So when I affect this one, it also affects that one while maintaining my Red depth layering. Does that make so sense? It's usually better to have one drawing. Yeah, usually. Sometimes when I'm really speedy, I'll just do this way because it takes a little less planning and I'm like, I'll do the rev if I get it. I just need to get it out fast. Um, but this way, you'll run into this more often in a completed build. Whereas this, I tend to do when I'm just trying to make a quick overlay on something. Does that make sense? Uh, your other questions, is that everything? Uh, there was this question, yes. if what happens when you go to the drawing view mm -hmm. and you lose the drawing view? Um, yeah. So, on this one, I don't see anything in here because I'm on the line art layer. But if I go here, I'll see the color art layer. If I want to see all the layers at once, you can turn on this eye and you'll see all the layers at once. You, there are some times that I... Even if it's all on, yeah. I, can, I can't find it. So I need to go like very far or very yeah. near. Like say it's way, way over there mm -hmm. and I can't see it anymore. And I'm like, oh my God, this white expands. If you hit shift M, oh, okay. it pops you back. Oh, okay, okay. Shift M is your main tool for popping back your drawing view and your camera. So if I zoom in really close and I rotate my screen around, if you guys don't know the rotation hotkey, you hold control and alt at the same time. And I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I could see what this looks like wide. You hit Shift M, pops you back to camera view. And you're like, oh, I wish I could get back to exactly where I was before. You hit Shift M, you're back to where you were before. So that's how you reset camera and drawing. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. Thank you. 
one more question yes. and I'll say it to two people here. One, one that you want to put like a very big thing. Mm. How did you uh, disable the option to make an automatic tweet? Oh, uh, the preferences for turning off automatic tweeting, you go edit, preferences, under general in settings, you want to make sure this is checked. Stop motion keyframes, which means that there will be no tweens. The explainer here isn't very clear, but basically it's meaning like when you're doing a stop motion movie, it's a photo at a time. If I have this unchecked, I will constantly get tweens. Yeah. Um, but if you're using <laughs> if you're using this tool that does automatic keyframes, no matter what, there will always be a tweet at the end. No one knows how to fix it. I brought it up with Harmony myself, and they were mm -hmm. like, I thought people liked that. And everyone in the call was like, no, we hate it. Mm -hmm. They haven't fixed it. They're just keeping it that way. So if you use this tool, it will always make a key, uh, tween at the end. That's just the machine. You just remove the tween. Any other questions? OK. Uh, who else I have to talk to? OK, I got to talk to her, and then Jacob, and then Hong. Oh, yeah, whoops, I forgot to stop hitting record.